Hello students, I hope you all are doing very well and welcome to the chemistry sessions once again. So in the last class what we were discussing, we had gone through everything, all the reactions about the carbohydrates. What have we done in the carbohydrates? We have done the type of carbohydrates, the classification, the type of optical activity, they are showing the type of configuration which they attain and all the reactions by which we can deduce the structure of glucose that is the very very basic saccharide that we obtain and the basic reactions which glucose undergoes also the reactions particularly which reducing sugars give and all the kinds of structures all the kind of linkages most prominently the glycosidic linkage that we have discussed so i hope you all have revised the concepts very well Today we are going to start off with a very very new topic that is included in the biomolecules but another kind of biomolecule which is of prime importance also important from the point of view of growth and development of our body. So carbohydrates were those which provided us energy but here what we are going to discuss is proteins very essential part in our diet. So these days protein is actually is in trend why because everybody is going to the gym and they have to develop they have to maintain their bodies so for the development of muscles what do you need you need a lot of protein so a balanced diet including carbohydrates and proteins and we will be discussing others as well which are vitamins and minerals those include perfect development for a human being so we are going to start off with the proteins today very very essential part that is the basically building blocks proteins are known as the building blocks of our bodies why because here proteins actually take part in the formation of many things in our body what all things you can name so the hair, the nails that, that we have got, skin contains proteins, muscle contain proteins, even our tissues, everything, almost everything contains protein in our body. So in what all things the protein is included? It is included in skin, most prominently hair, nails, muscles, etc. So, proteins are actually what? What is the basis of protein? How the proteins are formed? Proteins are formed from in turn peptides and peptides are in turn formed from what kind of a basic monomer, what kind of a basic unit is involved in the formation of proteins? That is nothing but amino acids. So here, so the basic unit involved in the formation formation of protein which we will be going to focus upon is basically amino acids so from which all things do we attain proteins so do you know that yes very very common examples you have milk cheese meat and for those who are vegetarians they can attain the protein diet from pulses so what all things are included in here we can have proteins from we can have proteins from meat egg so you must have done this in your earlier classes as well in your junior classes a balanced diet is very well known to you so that is meat egg you can say pulses and etc so basically what we are going to discuss today is about the very basic unit that is involved in the formation of proteins that is amino acids we are going to discuss today so just try to note this down then I'll be taking up the amino acids. So basically how the proteins are formed. 
so i'll be writing down a very basic reaction that is happening in our bodies so here what is happening proteins in turn they hydrolyze they hydrolyze hydrolysis and what do they give they give here peptides peptides which in turn again hydrolyze and they give alpha amino acids or simply you can say the amino acids i am going to discuss what alpha here in this case is so alpha amino acids now basically what is happening now what is the definition of proteins actually so basically proteins are nothing but the condensed units condensed units of what we connect the units of what amino acids amino acids we get connected and the connected amino acids will in turn form what large structures those large structures are nothing but the proteins so here what is the proper definition for proteins these are the chemically condensed units so these are chemically condensed or you can say not units but substances chemically condensed substances in which the basic monomeric units are amino acids so basically the monomeric units the term that i have used here what is this whenever we are going to make a polymer what is a polymer it is the connection of large number of single units so those single units which collect and together form a polymer poly means multiple multiple in thousands or millions you can say so polymer is the collection of different different units those smaller units are known as nothing but the monomers mono means single that means one single unit such single units will get combined to form a poly units that is polymers so i hope you are getting the idea over here and monomers i am calling it amino acids over here because many amino acids large number of type of amino acids you cannot say that only one kind of an amino acid is involved but it can be different types of amino acid as well so different type of amino acids will combine to form a chemical substance to form a polymer kind of a unit which is known as nothing but the proteins so i hope you are getting the definition here now we will be moving on to what amino acids are actually so here let us just move on to what are amino acids so what are amino acids as the name suggest amino depicting the amine and acids depicting what carboxylic acid i'm talking about here so here it is not sulfuric or hcl those kind of acids no i am talking about the functional groups here so the amino functional group the amine functional group i'm talking about and c double o h that is the carboxylic acid so actually amino acid is a kind of organic compound having both amines as well as the carboxylic acid so those are nothing but the all together known as amino acids so these are the organic substances or i can say organic compound containing both amine and carboxylic acid as the functional group containing both amine 
and carboxylic acid acids as functional group. So, what is the basic formula for amino acid that is the question over here. So, we have got amine, we have got carboxylic acid in it. So, it will be something like this, the general formula that I am talking about here. So, the general formula over here for amino acids will be something like this. As you can see over here, I have put an amine and one carboxylic acid group like that. So, I have got an amino group, I have got a carboxylic acid. So, what will it be? It is nothing but a general formula for the amino acids. So, this is an amino acid. What does this R group stands for? So, each and every amino acid, I am talking about here the alpha amino acid to be very precise. I am going to tell you in a moment that what alpha actually means here. So, first focus upon what is R. R can be any alkyl group. So, R is here any alkyl group. So, that is the general formula and what type of amino acids are there. So, the depending upon the position of carboxylic acid over here, we can have different positions for this NH2 group, for this amino group and that is how we call it as alpha or beta or gamma, delta and so on. So, that is how we are going to have proper names for the amino acids. So, what did I just tell you? Types of amino acids. So, first I am discussing about the relative position of NH2. So, I am discussing the type of amino acids with respect to the relative position, relative position of what relative positions of the NH2 group with respect to carboxylic group. That means what? Let us just see. I will be taking up certain examples for that. So, if I have CWH here, I am fixing this group over here and then I will be deciding the position of NH2 relative to this fixed group. So, here if I make another carbon and attach NH2 over here R and H. So, that is the very basic formula. Next would be if I have again CWH C H H what else? CNH2 and what next? Let me just make it an R over here. So, what do I have? Let me just make that properly. NH2. So, with respect to the COOH here, I am fixing the position of CWH. Let us just say I am naming the carbon as number 1 and actually according to the preference order over here, I will be having carboxylic acid on the number 1 position in the functional groups order. So, here it will be on the number 1 position that is 2 and that will be 3. So, on to the third position I have got what? The amino group with respect to the fixed position of the carboxylic acid. Here with respect to the fixed position of carboxylic acid, I have got on to the number 2. So, we call it as the alpha position, the position that is just adjacent to the carboxylic carbon. So, that position over here will be alpha. 
So this position is alpha onto which the amine group has been attached. So this is known as alpha amino acid. So I hope you all have got how I have named this as alpha amino acid because onto the alpha position, onto the alpha carbon, there is the amino group attached. So I hope you all are able to clearly distinguish between the two now. How? Here there is the alpha carbon. Let me just mark it out. This is alpha and over here this one is beta. So on to which position is my amine group attached? On to the beta position. So that means this amino acid will be known as the beta amino acid due to the relative position of amino group with respect to the fixed carboxylic group. So I hope you are very very clear with the idea over here. So it's beta amino acid. So the different types of amino acids depending upon the fixed position of the carboxylic acid and the relative position of the amino acid, I will be having what type of amino acids? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta and so on. So we will be discussing the initial ones, most prominently we will be focusing upon the alpha amino acids. So I hope this idea is very well clear to you. Now let's move on to the very basic alpha amino acids. So here under the category of amino acids, I will be taking up alpha amino first. So let us just discuss the alpha amino acids. What are basically alpha amino acids? How many types of alpha amino acids are there particularly? So there are 26 alpha amino acids. Twenty-six have been isolated so far. That means there may be more and more but still the discovery is going on, still the research is going on to find out new alpha amino acids. So far scientists have discovered 26 alpha amino acids, 26 different varieties of alpha amino acids have been isolated from our nature, from our bodies, from the plants bodies, animal bodies and differently. So I have got 26 out of which 20 are actually occurring very commonly in all the proteins. So the proteins have almost these 20, all these 20 amino acids present. So these are present in proteins, definitely the proteins but very commonly occurring proteins. So I am saying about the commonly occurring proteins. commonly occurring. What else? We are left with 6 and these 6 are present not in every protein but they are actually present in some kind of special tissues. So they are present in some special tissues. So I hope the number is clear, you just have to mug it up. So now what are alpha amino acids, let us just discuss that. So basically what is the very very basic alpha amino acid over here? It is glycine, glycine means it has been derived again from a Greek word glycos and it actually means it is sweet in taste. So glycine is sweet in taste. What is the structure for the glycine over here? So be careful, just pay attention. So I have got CWH. So as you can see over here, I am talking about the alpha amino acid. So first I can arrange the alpha position of the amino group over here like that. That is the amino position here. Sorry, the alpha position. Now 
instead of having an R group and alkyl group since this is the very very basic the first alpha amino acid in the series then it must be here H. So what do I have here an alpha amino acid and what kind of alpha, alpha amino acid is it NH2 or I can say an arrangement like this NH2 CH2 CWH so that is nothing but the glycine. So that is glycine alpha amino acid. Now what is the fact over here what is the interesting thing about this glycine? This is the only amino acid over here which is not optically active. So glycine is the only alpha amino acid which is optically inactive. How you can judge that? So over here if you see very clearly what do you have? I don't have a chiral carbon over here because this carbon is having one NH2 and two similar groups of hydrogens over here. If there would have been some other group over here, some R group, some alkyl group over here, then it would have been a chiral carbon. But this time this is not. So glycine is the only amino acid which is not optically active. It will not be forming any kind of enantiomers, any kind of diastereomers, etc. So I hope you all have got this. So this is known as glycine. Now let's move on to the basic classification of amino acids over here. So what are the basis of classification of amino acids? basis of classification of amino acids so amino acids are of different kinds what kind of I have got three types neutral number one acidic and thirdly the basic what are neutral amino acids so as you can see in the compound in the general formula of the amino acid what do you have you have got one amine group and one carboxylic group so both are one is base other one is acid so if both are present in similar quantity that means one one then what will happen it will be altogether a neutral compound so those compounds those amino acids which are actually i'm talking about here the alpha amino acids so those alpha amino acids who are having equal number of or i can say only one one that means one nh2 one cwh one is basic one is acidic making the overall alpha amino acid what neutral compound so the NH2 group will be serving as or let me just write this fact over here NH2 group will be serving as base serving or I can say behaving as base why why because it has got lone pairs to donate so it is behaving as a base And whereas CWH CWH is behaving as an acid that means if both are present in the similar quantities all together it will be making a neutral compound so here what do I have those alpha amino acids in which
the carboxylic and the amino group are present in the same quantity and amino group are in equal number equal number or generally they are present one and one 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 i can say so those all in all will be having a neutral compound because carboxylic is acid whereas amine is a base so i've got a neutral compound over here what about the acidic ones those having extra carboxylic acids even extra than what even than the actual carboxylic acid that is present in the amino acid so acidic are those having more number of carboxylic groups as compared to the amino groups so those are nothing but acidic they are serving as acidic so this is very very natural this is very obvious that whenever i'm having more number of carboxylic acid groups as compared to the less number of things less number of bases which are able to neutralize it then the overall compound will be always be acidic so that is very very general very very obvious here what do we have in basics so now you will be able to get it what will be the basic amino acids so basic will be having more number of amino groups in comparison with the carboxylic acids so here those having more number of amino groups as compared to carboxylic group so i hope you are all able to get this idea over here let us just have the examples in each of these cases so let's have the examples so in the examples under the category of amino acids what do i have i have got different kind of amino acids and for each amino acid i've got a three letter word i've got a abbreviation for it and i've got a code for it as well so for our ease since the amino acids are very very big substances and even whenever they form the polymeric units big polymeric units of proteins then for that case we do not have to remember because each and every protein it does not matter that it contains as i told you it does not matter that it contains the similar kind of amino acids but it can have large number of different kinds of amino acids so to remember the entire structure or to have an iupac name for that is very very difficult so in that case what we have assigned is we have assigned particular abbreviations for the amino acids and the letter code single letter code single alphabet we have assigned so here what do we have under the category of neutral i am just taking up the few examples in book you may find it many examples related to it so the neutral amino acids aa i am writing it down and this is for the abbreviations used and this very is the letter code so under the category of neutral first of all we have glycine it doesn't matter we are taking optically active or inactive i am just talking about the neutrality the acidity and the basicity of amino acids so here number 1 is glycine and okay here i'll be forming up the structure as well so that is for the structure the abbreviation used in the case of glycine is gly the letter code g 
what is the structure over here we all know we already know this that here there is no r group but instead of that r group is h so here what do we have we have got h i'm just writing down the h that is the basic structure that i'm writing here c nh2 h c double o h so i'll be taking up the r quantity or the group that is fixed over here under this area what next next is alanine next is the alanine over here it is ala again a will be the abbreviation over here and i have got only one ch3 as the alkyl group over here so what will be the structural formula for it so i am just drawing it over here the structural formula will be ch3 c nh2 h c w h so that is the structural formula over here this compound is very much optically active as you can see so that is optically active next is valine so valine is val glyala val so here what do i have v and next would be so that is valine this very particular group will be attached over here and you will be getting what again the alpha amino acid that to neutral so as you observe over here why the neutrality is maintained there is only one nh2 group there is only one cwh maintaining it neutral rendering it neutral so these are some of the examples in the category of so which of the following bases is not present in dna so you must be having a proper knowledge of dna so let us just try to recall that so dna contains what it has got two kinds of bases that is purines and pyrimidines so i have got purines as well as pyrimidines and under the category of purines what do we have we have got adenine and guanine a and g and under the category of pyrimidines we have uracil cytosine and thymine but here in the dna uracil is not present but these four bases are present so as per our knowledge as per our information can we correlate it with this question so quinoline adenine cytosine thymine which is not present they are asking so adenine is there cytosine is there and thymine that means a c t but whereas quinoline is not a base but an alkaloid so quinoline is an alkaloid and it is not at all present in the dna it has nothing to do with the dna so i hope everybody has got the answer which is a so let's move on to the next very question so the next question is now it's quite important question here as it actually asks us about a particular test that is given by what so which of the following compounds can be detected by molish test so you need to have a proper information about a molish test it's a pretty beautiful kind of a test why because we take up the solution of the concerned compound out of the four which is the right answer so i am taking up the solution of that compound i add up what i add up let us just remove that first okay now what is molish test first i take up the compound solution plus i add up the alpha naphthol solution so i've got alpha naphthol solution i add up i mix up the two then what do i add is into the test tube i have taken these two things in a test tube here so what happens i then add up a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid here 
so that is conch H2SO4 and that too sliding on to the sides of the test tube. So I need to slide down the drops over here. What will happen? A beautiful violet ring will appear like that. So a beautiful violet ring will be appearing in the test tube confirming what? Confirming the presence of carbohydrates. So the Molish test is always for the carbohydrates. So another kind of a very informative question it is. That means Molish test always is used for the detection of sugars or we can say the carbohydrates in turn. So I hope everybody is clear with the test here. So you need to remember this very test particularly. Let's move on to the next question. So what do I have? So I've got the presence or the absence of hydroxy group. On which carbon atom of sugar differentiates RNA and DNA? So they are actually asking about what is the difference between the structure of RNA and DNA. So let us just try to make it, make it out. So we all know that RNA is a ribose nucleic acid and DNA is RNA is ribose nucleic acid. And whereas the DNA is that is deoxyribose nucleic acid. So that is deoxyribose nucleic acid that means what do we have we have got a pentose sugar here so we have got a pentose sugar that means both are pentose I just need to have a deoxy part that means I am removing one OH group so that is what it needs to be and if you observe over here, what is the actual sugar present? It's beta D ribose. Whereas in this case, it's beta 2 dash deoxy. It is also D, deoxy ribose. So first, let us just find out what ribose is. So ribose is actually aldopentoses. So ribose is aldopentoses that means having five carbon atoms. So in the case of beta that means the anomeric carbon it would be having OH towards upper direction and so where do we start from here? We started from this very side OH H and over here it would be okay now let me just make this a bit different I need to have a D that means it would be lying towards right and as I told you in my sessions if you have followed up my sessions D means whenever I am having an open chain structure it would be the OH would be lying towards the right hand side that means this very side so it must be represented downwards whenever I am drawing the cyclic structure so that is how it needs to be and this is nothing but the beta D ribose so we have got the structure over here and in order to have beta 2 dash that means what first second so that would be the second carbon atom so here on the second carbon atom, I need to replace this OH. That means I need to have a deoxy part. I'm deoxidizing it. That means removing this OH part. So that is what here it needs to be. The, the remaining structure would be the same. But here it would be instead of OH, it would be H. So that is what the sugar is included in the DNA. So let us just make the remaining ones. So that is what we need to have over here. So let us just analyze the question, the presence or absence of hydroxy group. So they are actually asking the absence of hydroxy group. So we have got 
absence not the presence that is the first thing that we have confirmed and they are asking about on to which carbon atom it is actually absent so here if you look it is very much evident from the name itself but still in order to have a proper clarity i have drawn the structures as well on to the second carbon atom there will be a difference of oh group so let us just mark out our option it is b i hope everybody has got it so now let's move on to the next very question so it is yes oh here the question comes about the proteins finally the secondary structure of protein refers to so i need to have a proper information about what primary protein is what secondary is and what tertiary is so we all know that primary is just depicting a chain of different amino acids linked together so that is a single chain and that single chain is containing different amino acids linked and what about the secondary secondary now comes up with more structures that means a different kind of a representation of this straight chain of this sequence of amino acids so basically it represents sequence of alpha amino acids whereas the secondary one has got what has got two types two types of structure formed now this chain getting developed into a structure that means we have got first is helical structure so we have got a helix and these are the different amino acids and also we have got the beta pleated structure something like that that means we have got the answer in the secondary structure we have got alpha helical structures alpha helix and beta pleated structures so i hope everybody is able to recall the concept over here let us just mark out our option so it's alpha helical backbone they are asking about the secondary structure so alpha helical backbone hydrophobic interactions it is not hydrophobic sequence of alpha amino acids no it is represented by the primary fixed configuration of the polypeptide so that is not also the case fixed configuration may or may not be there so what do we have a as the answer i hope everybody has followed up so let's just move on to the next very question what do i have now again a pretty simple question so i have got the term anomers of glucose refers to so we all know what anomers are so let us just have a look at the options isomers of glucose that differ in the configurations at carbons 1 and carbon 4 so they are asking about carbon 1 and 4 that is not anomers but this is epimers if you are able to recall a mixture of d glucose and l glucose also not the case because d and l that means oh which is to the last if i draw the structure for glucose that is glucose that i'm drawing over here so in order to have a proper configuration that means here i would like to represent the configuration that is this is d glucose and what if i have this oh towards the left then it would be l glucose it is not anomer but a proper configuration so here it is a configuration so this is also not the option that was not enantiomers of glucose not at all the enantiomers will be only these d and l could be the enantiomers so this is not the case isomers of glucose that differ in the configuration at carbon number 1 yes that is our option so let us just see how so if i have a structure of glucose like that and let us just make the glycosidic linkage so the glycosidic linkage will be somehow like this and let us just connect the two so if i connect the two what do i get a glycosidic linkage something like that 
So, that is how I am going to make it and if this OH now lies towards the right. So, this is C1. This is nothing but the anomeric carbon. We have already discussed this and this is C1. If OH is lying towards the right, we get the alpha anomer. And if this OH is lying towards the left, we get what? Beta anomer. So, that is related to the anomeric carbons that we have. I hope everybody is getting me. The term anomers of glucose refers to the isomers of glucose that differ in the configuration at carbon number 1. It will always be carbon number 1 for anomeric carbons. For epimers, it could be different. So, that is the difference. So, I hope everybody has got the answer right. Let us just move on to the next question. What do we have? Now comes up the question related to enzymes. So, I hope everybody has revised the concepts. So, identify the correct statement regarding the enzymes. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts. Yes, they are. That can normally function at very high temperatures. Approximately, they have given 1000 Kelvin. So, is there 1000 Kelvin temperature developed within our body? Not at all. Also, the enzymes lie in our body, they, proper, they function properly. That means what? They can actually exist, they can actually perform their activities within normal, within mild conditions. They do not require so much of temperature because so much of temperature in our body would be leading to something else. We would be dying. So, this option is incorrect. I need to find out the correct statement. Just be very careful with the question. Second is enzymes are normally heterogeneous catalysts and are very specific in their action. So, do you f find this very statement true? What is heterogeneous catalyst? That means they may be present in the other form within our body. But if you see, our body has what? Mostly the liquid state. It has got the liquid state and the enzymes need to be performing their actions within that liquid state. So, they may be, they actually not may be, but they must be lying in the same very state. That means they must be lying in the homogeneous state. That means this very statement is incorrect again. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts that cannot be poisoned. They can definitely be poisoned. So, if you have read about the chapter of chemistry in everyday life, there is a lot of things, there are a lot of medicines which are available actually, which actually try to modify the function of that enzyme. That means we are poisoning the enzyme within the body in order to treat a proper condition or in order to alter the way of, the, of that enzyme. So, remember having allost allosteric sites. So, whenever a drug actually attacks on the allosteric site of the enzyme, it modifies its active site, the shape of the active site. And what will happen? The activity of that enzyme is modified. So, they definitely be poisoned. They can be poisoned. That means this statement is incorrect, can be poisoned. So, I hope everybody has got this very point. Now, let us move on to the last. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts. Indeed, they are that possess well-defined active sites. Yes, a specific enzyme has a specific active site for a specific substrate. That what locks and key model says. So, I hope everybody has recalled the concept and this is the very correct answer over here. So, now let us move on to the next very question. So, what does the next question say? The reason for the double helical structure of DNA is the operation of. So, I need to find out what kind of a force is existing between the double helical structure. What is a double helical? something like this. So, that is what the double helical structure is and I need to have some bases in between A connected with T, G connected with C, G connected with C, A, T, 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 
a g a sorry it would be a and so on that is how we need to have so these are the two helical structures two secondary structures of proteins one is this strand and the other is the yellow one so actually these two strands are getting connected to form a dna so how these strands are connected that is the question so we all know that a binds with two kinds of bonds with t and g binds with three kinds of bond with c that means what what are these type of bonds these are nothing but the hydrogen bonds so we have got h bonding over here so let me just complete it out so it would be 2 it would be 3 again 3 again 2 2 it's just a random sequence that i've have so that is how the dna gets connected the two strands get connected via hydrogen bond so let us just find out our option van der waal forces no dipole dipole interaction not at all i've got the hydrogen bonding over here and that is our answer i hope everybody has followed up so now let's just move on to the next yes complete hydrolysis of cellulose gives so remember the structure of cellulose what does it actually contains so cellulose is actually having a beta d glucose and a connection between what again a beta d glucose so i've got a beta d and a beta d and one beta d glucose is connected via carbon 1 and the other one is connected via carbon 4 and that is how the connection is made so let us just have the structure first so the structure is i am making the two glucose molecules here and i need to make beta that means oh on the upper side that is how i'm going to make it this is what this is carbon number 1 so that is carbon number 1 i need to have a proper glycosidic uh, glycosidic linkage between the two again a beta d glucose molecule and over here there would be the connection that is how we are going to make the cellulose so it would be like this so that is the connection and these kind of molecules will be connected and the chains would be formed so this is nothing but the basic molecule of cellulose so upon the hydrolysis of cellulose that means i am breaking the molecules into the monomers so what kind of monomers will i be getting is it d fructose no d glucose d l glucose so what will i be getting here is not d fructose not d, d ribose out of d glucose and l glucose what will it be we have already done this it is d glucose every time so just be very careful while choosing the options here it would be d glucose as the answer i hope everybody has got the answer right so let's just move on to the second last question what do we have okay monomers are converted to a polymer by so the question actually resembles the chapter polymers but still yet it has a meaning in this chapter as well so the monomer is always converted into a polymer what kind of a monomer and what kind of a polymer we are dealing with here in the biomolecules chapter is the peptide linkages or we can say the peptides are converted into polypeptides so how are these polypeptide chain formed they are formed by when specific amino acids they get combined and how they are combined they are combined by condensation or i can say removal of water molecule 
So, if I take an example of glyella, how does it form? So, it forms or if I say two glycine molecules are connected, let us just have glyella first. So, it would be, okay, let me just write it again. <coughs> So, I am connecting the two. So, it would be something like this, the glycine would be something like this and let me just make the alanine. So, that is alanine here and we need to make a polymer, we need to make a polypeptide. So, I need to have several peptide bonds in that very chain. So, I would be condensing the two to make it attach. That means loss of water molecule. That is how it is going to get a loss. Let me just make it again. So, it would be OH and there will be a loss of water molecule minus H2O. That means leading to the condensation and forming that is how different kind of amino acids get connected via condensation process and give a polymer or a polypeptide. So, that is what we have over here. It would be glyella. And so on. And so on. So, that is how the connection is made. I hope everybody is clear with it. So, monomers are converted to polymer by hydrolysis of monomers? No. Hydrolysis means breakdown, condensation reaction between monomers. Yes, this is the answer. Protonation of monomers, none of the above. So, none of the options, the last two are correct, but B is. I hope everybody has got the answer over here. Now, let us move on to the last very last question. What do we have? A substance from a substance from Zwitter ion, it can have functional groups. So, what is a Zwitter ion? Whenever a compound is containing a basic part as well as an acidic part. So, how does the Zwitter ion actually gets formed? So, if I take up this very case, this is nothing but depicting the amino acid. So, let us just try to make this Zwitter ion here. So, it would be, okay, if I take up alanine, CWH. So, what happens is, this is a base. <coughs> it has got electrons to donate. So, that is a base. That is an acid. That means, it can donate its proton. Where the proton goes? onto these electrons. So, what kind of an ion we get? We get a Zwitter ion over here that would be somehow like this having positive as well as the negative charges. So, we have got this option right, but if you see at the B option, I have got sulfonic acid. So, can the presence of sulfonic acid can also be forming a Zwitter ion? So, let us just see. Yes, definitely it can also be a Zwitter ion formation in the case of sulfonic acid. So, here if again I take up similar kind of a molecule NH2 and SO3H. Again, this acid is capable of donating the H positive. So, what do I get here? Again, I get a Zwitter ion, NH3 positive, SO3 negative, H and CH3. So, in this very case also, we can form the Zwitter ion. So, that is how the Zwitter ion is made. Whenever we have acid as well as the basic part within a particular molecule, so it can have positive and negative charges developed. So, that is how we are going to find the isoelectric point as well in the case of amino acids. So, I hope everybody has got it. This is also can be the case. Now, that means both A and B is a correct option. I hope you have got the answer over here. 
and i hope you have liked the questionnaire round it was pretty easy not a big deal not very tough so you just need to practice all of those once again to have a proper hold over the subject i'll be dealing with the biomolecules advanced in the next session till then have a good day